I think it's probably the best screenplay that I've ever read. You don't get that sense that it's a period drama. There's this kind of fable quality to it that I thought was unique. He's written a piece that is almost like it's one of Saad's outrageous novels or one of his cheesier theatrical attempts. Whereas the Marquis is a man in the extreme, the Abbe is a man of moderation. They place the fruit on the belly of a bride and reap its juices when the young husband steers his vessel into port. Usually when you have two characters debating, it's, it's very easy to take the sides of one character. Whereas in this, the story unfolds, I think that you're going to feel torn. It's from our own cellar. I recognize the taste. I should have told you it was the blood of Christ. You'd believe that, wouldn't you? He's trying for a world of peace and serenity, and if, if you will, a holy world. And the Marquis values the unholiness of things. But I'm not a beautiful young prospect ripe for corruption. Don't be so sure. I think he's uh, a sexy subject. I mean, uh, uh, he wrote about uh, the basest aspects of ourselves and our most primitive appetites. And like it or not, we all share those things. And uh, I, I think uh, that's bound to uh, intrigue people. We don't want to deny them the possibility of belly laughing at some of the most dangerous ideas in the script because he said that's what it's there for. I think people are going to be surprised that it's actually quite subtle in that, in, in that sort of sexual sense and it's much more um, humorous in so many others. Oh, bravo, Dauphin. It's far better to paint fires than to set them, isn't it? Yes. It was very interesting to me how, you know, how it really sort of shifts um, all the time, all the way through, and that it's so much about, you know, everyone in this asylum and not just about him. To be able to attract actors of that caliber who want to bite into the material with zeal and, and, and perform it suggests that it's the kind of movie that, uh, that a lot of people will, will find intriguing. Not only was I lucky to find the four principal actors, but there were all the smaller characters, all these marvelous actors who filled out and created within the context of the, of the piece, you know, full-blown characters. We have a lot of people who've come from a disabled actors' theatre company, and it's a real inspiration, actually, to watch these people work. He's an actors' director, but if you look at the way he comes out the scene, and, and his logic behind it, if you speak to him, I mean, he's not just set it up because the scenery's lit, you know. If you talk to him, you say, why are you doing this? And he, he, he'll give you ten minutes on why he's doing it. It's quite amazing. He's a great director, I think. Doug Wright, the writer, is here with us all the time, too, and that's really incredibly helpful because sometimes there are so many sections that are almost... They're, they're intellectual to the point of being similar to Shakespeare. Suppose one of your precious inmates attempted to walk on water and drowned. Would you condemn the Bible? I think not. We're still having the same debates now that uh, they were having then um, about sexuality and, and, and religion and, and politics. Well, this monstrous god of yours, he strung up his very own son like a side of veal. I shudder to think what he'd do to me. Questions about whether uh, art can incite us to acts of violence or whether it can uh, warp uh, uh, fragile uh, psychology. So I think that the question Saad poses couldn't be more germane to the age that we're living in. What about my book? 